Hi, if you watch my videos, then you will know that I am pro EV and we've just bought our fifth one as a family. And if you include things like scooters, bikes, and electric unicycles, then we're well over 20. I was in two minds when it came to making this video because I don't want to play into the hands of EV haters. But I think if you're thinking of making the switch from petrol or diesel to electric vehicles, then range is just so important that I think we need to talk about the fact that you're probably not going to get as much range as the manufacturers tell you that you will. In fact, when I bought my first EV, which was a Tesla Model S, that had a claimed range on the Tesla website of 304 miles. I'll tell you at the end of this video and you'll be surprised how far it actually went. So I'm gonna discuss five EVs, and these are EVs that we've driven between 1,000 and 30,000 miles in, in real world conditions, and I'm gonna tell you exactly how far they go. Let's get cracking. And before I start with the first car, I want to just explain what miles per kilowatt hour means. If you don't know, if you already know what that means, then just skip to the next chapter. But if you don't, then you're probably used to miles per gallon or kilometers per liter. So that is a, a unit of distance, miles, versus a, compared to a unit of energy, a gallon, so miles per gallon. With an electric vehicle, then you'll be looking at miles per kilowatt hour. In this case, a kilowatt hour is a unit of energy. Electricity is stored in hours. That's for another video. And what that means is that if you buy an EV and it's got, say, a 50 kilowatt hour battery and your EV gets four miles per kilowatt hour, then four times 50 is 200. And that will give you an approximate range for that EV. And if the same EV, when the same 50 kilowatt hour battery is only getting three miles per kilowatt hour, then you're down to say 150. So the first car is a Volkswagen e-Golf, the humble e-Golf. I think it is a compliance car. So this has a battery of usable battery of 33 kilowatt hours and a WLTP range of 144 miles. So that would mean that that car would need to get 4.36 miles per kilowatt hour to reach that range standard. On some days, this car can reach that range prediction. So we travel to the coast, it's a 140 mile round trip, and we're four up in the summer, and we're driving an average speed of around 50 miles an hour, and we manage to get to the coast and back on one charge. So 140 miles compared to the claim range of 144 miles, so that's pretty close, isn't it? However, we would get much less range in the winter. So if it's minus degrees, so we, we, we use Celsius here, if it was say minus two, minus five, then that range would be considerably less. So instead of getting four miles per kilo hour, we would be getting approximately three. So we'd be looking at about 100 miles in the depth of winter and 120 miles of range in spring and in autumn. And that would probably be the average for the year. So about 3.75 miles per kilowatt hour and a real world range of 120 miles. So fairly close in those summer months, but for the rest of the year, about sort of 85% of the claimed range. Another thing to consider with electric cars is how fast they charge when you're away from home. So we live in the UK and most houses have got single phase electricity, meaning you've got one electricity supply into the house. So all the cars I'm gonna talk about on our home chargers will charge at seven kilowatts per hour. And that means that you would have add about 25 to 30 miles of range per hour. But when you're out and about, then you might rapid charge. And with the e-Golf, a car like the e-Golf, it doesn't rapid charge particularly quick. So that will only take 40 kilowatt hours, meaning that if you're going on a journey beyond its range, then you would need to factor in your stops to charge, perhaps around meal breaks. And it kind of works out okay, because many coffee shops and food, fast food outlets have chargers now on site, so you can grab a bite to eat and then charge the car at the same time. The next car I'm going to talk about is the ID3, specifically the 58 kilowatt hour version. So I think that's probably the most popular one. And we've had three of those, we've driven three of those over the last couple of years, and we've actually owned one for several months as well. Now the claim range here is 259 miles, which means you'd need to get 4.5 miles per kilowatt hour to achieve that. 
so <laughs> this didn't happen in the time that we owned these cars. So the range on this car varied from say 230 for us on a really nice sunny day, all the way down to winter driving 200 miles or just under say about 195. And I actually managed to join the Zero Miles Club in, a in an ID3, which, um, which I'm smiling about now. <laughs> But it was a little bit hairy at the time. But although the ID3 isn't as fun to drive as the e-Golf, as I mentioned, I love an e-Golf, it does charge a lot faster as well when you're out and about. So it, if you hit, if you find a 100 kilowatt charger, you can easily add 100 miles on a 15 to 20 minute charge if you hit a charger that can deliver that full 100 kilowatts. And a 200 mile range car is probably plenty for lots of people because 200 miles takes around three hours to drive, doesn't it? So that's a good time to perhaps stop for 20, 30 minutes and just have a break. If you're enjoying this video, then please hit the like button. And if you like this sort of content, then please subscribe as well. It really helps us out. So the next car, which I've got real mixed feelings about, I had 1500 miles in an Audi e-tron. And this is probably the best built EV that I've ever been in. It's just pure luxury inside. The attention to detail, build quality, and the feel of the car, and the, the, hand, and the ride of the car, it's just really, really good. I really like the car. As an EV though, it was quite disappointing. This had an 86 kilowatt hour usable battery and a claimed range of 252 miles. So a battery that's 50% bigger than the, than the ID3's battery, but it doesn't go quite, quite as far. Yes, it's heavier, I know that, but I would expect a more efficient EV from the likes of Audi. And this meant in good weather, I would probably get 200 miles of range out of the e-tron. And if the weather was really bad, cold, windy, rainy, that could drop down to 180. And I think for a car of that quality and in that price bracket, I think it needs to go further. However, it does offset that slightly disappointing range with really fast charging speeds. So if you can get an e-tron on a 150 kilowatt charger, then you can easily add 100 miles of range in say 10 to 12 minutes. It does charge on the right charger very quickly. Next is my Tesla Model 3. So this is the car I currently drive. I've had this car since December 2021 and I absolutely love it. I miss the build quality of that e-tron, <laughs> but I love the efficiency of the Tesla Model 3. So this has a WLTP range on Tesla's website of 389 miles, which seems pretty good, doesn't it? And you'd think being a Tesla, because they are so efficient, it would get close to that range. And it, it doesn't. But luckily I knew this, <laughs> I knew this before I bought the car. So th my car will get 300 miles approximately on a really nice day which is plenty, that's about four hours driving if you're on a long journey. So well and truly time for a break. In the winter, that drops down to about 260. So even Tesla, who I, probably, I think are probably still leaders in EV efficiency, aren't really getting near their kind of uh, predicted WLTP figures. What is impressive though, is how fast a Tesla can charge. So a Tesla Model 3 long range or performance can charge at 250 kilowatts. So sometimes you see the peak charging speed is of adding 1000 miles an hour. It doesn't stay there very long, it tells off. But when you're adding speed that quickly, you don't need to stop for very long at all. We recently went to France, the south of France with a friend of ours. They were in their petrol car. We were in, an e in our Tesla Model 3 long range. They had three 20 minute breaks on the 700 mile journey. And we had three 40 minute breaks on the same journey. So we ended up stopping for only an hour longer than they did. And I would say after four hours of driving, it, I felt like I wanted to stop anyway. So on long journeys, it's not just about range, it's about how fast your car can charge as well and availability of chargers. I'm, I like Teslas, I'm not a Tesla fanboy anymore, I was when I first got my Tesla, but the good thing about Teslas and the Tesla charging network is if I wanted to go from Peterborough, which is my nearest city, to Paris, 
I would just put Paris in the sat nav and the car would work out exactly where I was going to stop and how long I would be stopping there. In addition to that, because Tesla's charging sites generally have plenty of chargers and because it's such a connected, connected network, if I'm heading towards a busy charger, it will know the state of charge of the cars that are at the station already and it will know that when I arrive, if there's gonna be spaces, if it thinks there's going to be a queue, it might take me to the next charger or it might take me to the charger before. It will automatically reroute me and it just makes life so much easier. So yes, EVs, annoyingly, I, I've not driven one yet <laughs> that goes as far as the manufacturer sa says it does. And people say, oh yeah, but petrol and diesel cars don't go as far. But when you've got five or 600 miles of range in your petrol or diesel car, and you're only getting say 90% of that, you're probably unlikely to notice. But if you're in an EV and you've, you've got a quoted range of say 300 miles and you're getting 230, real world usage, that difference is more inconvenient. But as you've seen, what can be more important or just as important as how far the car goes is if you need to stop, how quickly you're going to be able to top that battery up as well. So. At the start of this video, I said I would tell you how far my Model S 75D went. I mean, it was such a nice car. So sometimes I think, why did I sell it? But it had a claim range of 304 miles. And as I film this, it's March 2022. And if I go onto Tesla's website in the UK, you can see that they're selling these cars secondhand now with a claimed range of 304 miles of range. And what you may notice here is that it says NEDC. So the WLTP range is what most cars will have, especially in the UK. And I would say that is optimistic. <laughs> when it comes to the NEDC range, I mean, I just don't get it. It's like that auntie that loves you no matter whatever you do. If you rob a bank, that auntie will be sure you must have had a good reason for robbing the bank. The NEDC, in my experience, is just so far away from the real, real world range of an EV that I'm glad that we're using WLTP figures when you buy a car these days. So coming from a BMW X5, which would do about 550 miles, I said to the Tesla salesperson, 304 miles will be plenty for me. And he replied and said, uh, probably expect 70% of that which I thought was odd because I didn't understand why you would say 304 if you're going to get 70% of that. But he was right when I picked the car up in June 2019. It did exactly 230 miles from full to empty, so about 70% of that. But what I hadn't anticipated was in the winter that that would get a lot worse. So as a new EV driver, I didn't know how much weather wind, rain can affect the range of an electric vehicle. So at the worst case scenario with snow on the ground and rain hitting the car, that car would be down to about 170 miles of range. So that's nearly half the official NEDC range of that vehicle. That's a pretty alarming differential between the claim range and what I was actually getting in this car. And I would recommend this website. So if you're buying, thinking about buying an EV, then go to this website and they will give you the actual real world user range of nearly any electric vehicle that's on the market today. To finish on a positive note, as an EV driver, I absolutely love it. I really would struggle to go back to a petrol or a diesel car. I love, there's so many benefits to driving an EV on a day-to-day -day basis. So for instance, we never wake up to a, a cold car. In the mornings, our cars are programmed to be exactly the temperature that we want them to be when we're ready to leave the house. And the, the, the cars will draw electricity from the house through the charger and either heat or cool the car to that temperature. It really is impressive, especially when our neighbors are like scraping the frost off their cars and we're getting into a car that's exactly 23 degrees Celsius and all the frost has been removed for us by the defrosting process of these vehicles. This isn't the video to start talking about the benefits. I will make a, a separate video about the benefits of owning an EV. I hope you found this video useful and until next time, see you soon.